Chris Christmas poem. Author unknown. It's not new. You can probably tell when you hear, hear it that it was written probably ten, ten or so years ago. Was the night before Christmas and all through the town, not a sign of baby Jesus was anywhere to be found. The people were all busy with Christmas time chores, like decorating and baking and shopping in stores. No one sang away in the manger, no crib or bed. Instead, they sang songs about a man dressed in red. Mama was watching Martha Stewart and Papa drank beer from a tap. As honor upon honor, the presents they wrapped. And what from the TV did they suddenly hear? Set an ad which told them of a big sale at Sears. So away to the mall, they all flew like a flash, buying things on credit and others with cash. And as they made their way home from their trip to the mall, did they think about Jesus? Not at all. Their lives were so busy with their Christmas time things, no time to remember Christ Jesus, the King. There were presents to wrap and cookies to bake. How could they stop and remember who died for their sake? To pray to the Savior, they had no time to stop because they needed more time to shop until they dropped. From the big stores downtown to the stores at the mall, they would dash away and dash away all and visit them all. And up on the roof there rose such a clatter as Grandpa hung icicle lights on his brand new step ladder. He hung lights that would flash, he hung lights that would twirl, <coughs> never. He never once prayed to Jesus, the light of the world. Christ's eyes, how they twinkle. Christ's spirit, how merry. Christ's love, how enormous. All our burdens he carries. So instead of being busy, overworked and uptight, let's put Christ back in Christmas, and enjoy some good nights. Merry Christmas. Amen. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Happy Sabbath. Lord has been good to us, amen. Amen. All the passages that I'll be reading will be taken from the King James Version. Father, never let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. The four and twenty elders fall on before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive our glory and honor and praise, for thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure they are and were created. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 and 9, Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world have been created in God through Jesus Christ. So God created for his glory, John says. And Paul tells us it was created through Jesus Christ. Well, what did he create? Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. 
God is not about to prove himself. He just declares himself. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. That's the big bang. Amen. Amen. And God he divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. But Jesus did not stop it. He went on to create. Amen? Amen. In verse 6, he created the firmament. In verse 9, he gathered the waters together, and he called it seas, and the dry land appeared. He spread a carpet of green grass, and he put a host, a multitude, a variety of trees of all kinds. All the fruit trees laden with fruits, the apples and the peaches and the pears and the pomegranates and the plums and the sun fruits, the coconuts and the avocados and the mangoes. He loves variety, amen. And verse 60, day number four, God created two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He created the stars also. Day number five, verse 20, God created, he said, not the let the waters bring forth living creatures. And he populated the ocean with all kinds of fishes, all shapes and sizes and colors. Uh, the, the, the snappers and the dolphins and the big blue whales and the tiny sardines. <laughs> God created them all. And God also said, let the, let the woodland bring forth birds of all kinds and colors and shapes. The canary and the woodpecker. And can you imagine the, the, the eagle? and the chicken and the hawk, and also the tiny hummingbird. God created them all. God is a God of variety. Amen. And in day number five, God said, Let, that, that's the day number five, right? Yes. Day number six, God said that the earth bring forth living creatures, animals of all kinds, the chimpanzees and the gorillas and the lions and the tigers. God created them all. And also on day 6, God said, let us make man, verse 26 and 27, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fall of the air, and over the cattle, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the face of the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, a male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said, let them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And that was a crown enough. Man was the crowning act of God's creation. And Genesis 1, 31 says, And God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Whatever God does, he is very good. Amen? Amen. Amen. And Genesis chapter 2, God continued to create. Reading from verse 1, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and God blessed the seventh day, and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So God made a sound, but he designed it, he blessed it, he had it, he sanctified it, amen. And we are enjoying the blessing of the Sabbath even today, amen. amen. So there was a perfect God and a perfect creation in Genesis 1 and 2. But something happened in Genesis chapter 3. There was a perfect God and an imperfect creation. But God gave a beautiful promise. In Genesis 3.15, it's called the proto Evangelium, the first gospel promise of a coming deliverer. And God said in Genesis 3.15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise her head, and thou shalt bruise her seed. What a beautiful promise to the human race. Amen. That man was not left to himself. Mm -hmm. yes. That there would come a deliverer yeah. who would save, who would, who would ransom, who would redeem him from this world of sin. Yeah. And Isaiah repeated the promise in, a, in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Ahaz was king of Judah, and Isaiah told Ahaz, Ask a sign from the Lord. And Ahaz said, I will not ask a sign from the Lord, never will I tempt the Lord. And Isaiah said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. God loves us, amen. amen. And in Isaiah chapter 7, chapter 9 and verse 6, 
It says, For of us a child is born, one for us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Amen. Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Thank God we have peace through Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeshua. Now, now, now all through the Old Testament, there was the promise of the coming Redeemer. But in the New Testament, uh, Matthew, who was a Jew, uh, in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's called the Synoptic Gospels, meaning the same. And Matthew was writing to a Jewish congregation, to a Jewish audience. Mark was writing to the Gentiles, to the Romans. Luke who was a physician. He was the only Gentile who also wrote the book of Acts. He was writing to the Greeks. And John was writing to all people, all nations, to everyone. And that's why John says in John 2, 16, for God so loved the world. Amen? Amen. But Matthew re recounting the promise, he said in Matthew chapter 1, verse 22 and 23, that it might be fulfilled. And he used this word throughout the scriptures. That it might be fulfilled to convince the Jews that Jesus was the promised Messiah, the promised King. Amen. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be a child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Now the birth of Jesus is only recorded in two of the Gospels, Matthew chapter 2 and Luke chapter 2. Matthew did not record the visit of the shepherds, but he did record the visit of the, of the wise men, the Magi. And the Magi came from the east. They came from Persia. They traveled 800 miles by camel, heading towards Palestine because they saw the star. And Herod, in, in, in Luke, in Matthew chapter 2, <coughs> And verse 7, he inquired of them, at what time did you see the star? And the Bible says in, 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 in Matthew chapter 2 and verse 11, and when they had found him, and when they came into the house, they found a the child with Mary's mother, and fell on and worshipped him. And when they had opened the treasure, they presented on them, on them gifts of gold, frankincense, and wood. Matthew was trying to tell the Jews, that this was the king, this is this, this was gifts fit for a king. The king of the human race. Amen? Amen. And Herod was wrong because the, the Lord told the wise men, don't go back to town to uh, the turnpike, but go around town and take I4 and head up east. <laughs> and go back to your home another way. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So Herod was wrote and in verse 16 it says that Herod went and slew all the babies that was in Bethlehem of Judea and the coast and the surrounding coast that was two years old and under. How did he come up with two years? Why? Because he recounted the time that he inquired of the wise men. What time did you see the star? When did he begin to travel and head towards Palestine? And the Bible says in verse 11, when the wise men found the child, he was in the house. Not in a major, not a babe, in a Jewish religion. An infant is called a child, must be at least one year old. So they have been traveling for over one year by camel over the desert, 800 miles, and they could only travel by night because they saw the star only in the night. Amen. Amen. So when you do the nativity scene, don't ever put the, the wise men and the shepherd at the same scene. It's, it's not biblical. Amen. Now, now look gives the most extensive account of the birth, life, and ministry of Christ. It's the longest of all the Gospels. And Luke was a Gentile. And Luke records the birth of Jesus in Luke chapter 2. Reading from verse 8. And Luke says, And there were shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And the angel of the Lord came upon them, and shone round about them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly, suddenly there was a host 
with the, the John the angel saying, Glory to God in the highest, and Lord, peace, good will to all men. And when the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the, the, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord had made known to us. And they came with haste and found a babe wrapped in swelling cloth, laying in a manger. Now, friend of mine, the swelling cloth that the babe was wrapped into was really burial cloth that the Jews walked around with. When, when, when the babe was placed in, in, it was a feeding trough for animals. It was shaped like a coffin. And at the end of Jesus' ministry, he was crucified on Golgotha. It was shaped like a skull. The Bible says the place of a skull. It means that Jesus was born to die. Amen. To die for you and I, the human race. This was the Redeemer that was to come. Amen. Amen. A friend of mine, God loves every single one of us. Matthew began his genealogy from Abraham. Mark began the genealogy from the preaching of John. Luke began the genealogy from the birth of John the Baptist. Elizabeth. But, but, but John began the genealogy not from Abraham, not from Adam, but John went way back. Because he wrote to all people. John was saying, in the beginning when there was only God. In the beginning, John, reading from verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Amen. And without Him was not anything made that was made, and Him was life. And the light was the light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Behold, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of that light, that all men through Him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which had every man had come into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world he not. He came under his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, not the will of the flesh, not the will of man, but of God. And verse 14 says, And the world became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, and John said, this is he of yes, whom I spoke. He was before me because he was preferred. He was before me. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. You can be sick and say that which was lost. Amen. You are not. May God bless us.
Amen. Did you know that your baby boy someday walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you your baby boy has walked where angels trod. When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? The blind will see, the deaf will hear, dead will ever gain. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby You know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect lamb. The sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Amen.
derelicts transformed, the lights of hope put back into the eyes of a hopeless child. At the name of Jesus, hatred and bitterness turn to love and forgiveness. Arguments cease. I've heard a mother softly breathe his name at the bedside of a child delirious from fever. And I've watched that little body grow quiet and the fever grow. I've sat beside a dying saint, her body racked with pain, who in those final fleeting seconds summoned her last ounce of ebbing strength to which earth's sweetest name and she whispered, Jesus, Jesus. Emperors have tried to destroy it. Philosophies have tried to stamp it out. Tyrants have tried to wash it from the face of the earth. 